Hello, welcome to Tech Shinji. Today we're going to go over installing all the GPUs in this rig, filling it up with water, priming the system, and getting this ready for operation. Stay with me and I'm going to take you through how we're going to do this step by step. We just drained out all the water from the mining rig. We're just gonna show how to do the maintenance. There's a plug right here, plug right here. There's quick disconnect fitting up here. As long as these plugs are out, I can have all the water just freely drain out of the rig. I'm gonna show you how I fill the rig. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prime the loop. I'm just gonna be using distilled water that I just got from the grocery store. I don't recommend using this long term because it doesn't have any anti-corrosive properties. It is distilled, so it technically has nothing in it. Water itself is actually not conductive. It's all the stuff in it that makes it conductive, like metal particles, dust, things like that. Eventually in a loop, it'll attract those little metal particles into the water and it'll become conductive. And it's like electrolyte, it'll turn into a battery. All the metals in this loop are pretty similar. It's copper and brass. The metals are dissimilar enough to create a difference, which creates a battery. And when that happens, it creates corrosion. And corrosion's bad. We don't want corrosion at all. So I'm just gonna take the reservoir cap off and I'm just gonna fill it until it stops filling with distilled water. We're just gonna put one GPU in, that way fluid will flow between these two fittings and it has to do that in order to prime the system correctly. And then I'm gonna put into fitting number two right here. I'll leave it just, just like that. Just turned it on and you can see the water is pumping. And actually it's flowing now. So I'm gonna stop it and pour more water in and I'm actually gonna put the reservoir cap on because it's starting to splash and I don't want any of this water to get anywhere for no reason. All right, so I just turned it on. I'm just gonna start pumping again. And then we just keep repeating this process until it doesn't take water anymore. Put the cap back on. Just turn it on and then let it pop. Now, it's very important that you do not let the pump run dry because if the pump runs dry, that, that can damage it. These are water lubricated D5 pumps. I got a pump right here. This is just a standalone pump and another pump right here, which is under the reservoir. We're gonna turn this back on again. And I'm pretty confident we're pretty close to getting full now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unplug the PWM control for the pumps. So let me just find the wire. It's this one right here. You probably heard that. The pumps just went to 100%. PWM, which is pulse width modulation, run at 100% when they detect no PWM signal. And we're just gonna fill the reservoir all the way up to the top. If you notice this little black thing right here, it's called a equalization membrane. What this allows is, let's say for some reason, there was high pressure in the system. It doesn't prevent a leak, rather it causes the leak to happen out of a desirable point. Generally the reservoir, the top of it at least, is filled with air, just this little space right here. And it's a lot better for air to leak out of here than for O-ring to pop somewhere else and leak all over the system. If the pressure got really high in the system, this little valve right here will allow the air to escape safely. I'm gonna turn it back on. It's gonna let it run for just a second, re regarding the water flow that is, to make sure we get all the air bubbles out. Seems pretty good. What we're gonna start doing now is adding GPUs. I'm gonna start installing the GPUs one by one. I'm gonna start at the slot furthest away from me, which I call slot one. So this is GPU number one. So this is just gonna go in slot number one. And then I'm actually not gonna connect this yet because I need to put the hardware in. Got the hardware right here. All right, so don't need that right now at least. This is a VETA frame. They got hole positions. You probably can see it. They got one, two, three. I think it's six GPU slots apart or six PCIe slots apart. I obviously wanted them to be a little closer because this was gonna be liquid cooled. There was no need to have them so uh, far apart. I mean, we got plenty of cooling. I made some custom holes in between the original holes from the VETA frame. I decided to make those holes of more standard like 632K screw thread because the ones it comes with is like an M4 or something like that. I didn't like these. The threads are really fine. It's not, it's not standard. 
The hole position number one actually takes Betaframe original screws. I have a washer and the screw. The reason being, I felt the screw, the head was a little bit too small. It didn't really install confidence on holding the, these heavy GPUs in place. I'm just gonna put this in right here. On the first position, I actually stripped, I, uh, stripped the thread when I was machining these 1032 holes. I'm gonna use this little standoff here to hold it in place. It's kind of hard to do this way, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. As with all things, you don't want to tighten one bolt all the way down. You just want to get it like mostly there and then back it off a little bit so it's still loose. That way the torque is distributed evenly and that's what you want. Good, that's best practice, almost in everything. So I'm just gonna get this other screw in here. There we go. I'm just gonna tighten these, uh, this hardware for GPU number one first. The reason why I tighten these up first is because when I start moving these tubes around, it starts putting a lot of torque on the graphics card and I don't necessarily want it to um, move or go anywhere. Since this is all pretty much solid and stable and these PCIe risers are actually pretty solid. They're connected by these 2020 extrusion rods going down the rig here. All right, I got GP number two. Make sure the fittings are tight. I'm just gonna put the rest of these in. GPU 2 takes 1032 threads. Uh, sorry, six, uh, 632. 1032 is a standard size in a, a place I work at, so I'm so used to them. Time for GPU 3, and we're gonna put the rest of them in right now. Um, before we do that, we're gonna try to make sure this power cable is out of the way because we don't want it to get caught up on anything. Pretty important. Looks like a little caterpillar order from Cable Mod, not sponsored, but they make great cables. These are all actually custom lengths. That way they're exactly the lengths they need to be. GPU number three. I have a better tool with me. This is the Weira 2.5 millimeter. They make the best tools, not sponsored. I mean, they're great. If you're gonna be building computers, especially metrics or whatever, get yourself a set of these. It's the best money you ever spent. I'm just gonna tighten everything down because I got pretty much all the GPUs in. I'm just waiting on two or the last one rather. Like with all things, you do not want to over torque these, not at all. You don't wanna be stripping this uh, bar out. This is just aluminum, so it's nothing strong, super strong at least. All right, I got GPU seven. We got all the GPUs installed. Now we're gonna connect all the power first and then we're gonna connect all the plumbing. The reason why we're doing the power first is after the tubes are all connected, it's kind of hard to access right here to the back of the cards. We're gonna turn all the tubes over. That way we're, they're out of the way for the power cable. Go ahead and plug all these in, starting from the furthest one. Okay, I got the power cables all installed and now it's time to connect all the water cooling lines. These are uh, Coolant's quick disconnect fittings and this allows it to keep the system operating. You don't have to drain the entire loop if you have a problem with the card. You can literally just take that card out, turn the system back on and let it continue to run. All the GPUs are connected. We're gonna turn it on and see how much water we actually lose and refill the reservoir. All right, you can see all the RGB I did. Cause you know, that's, that's super important. RGB makes the thing go faster. Everyone knows that. It's just gonna work out all the bubbles over time. It would probably help if I didn't have the pumps going quite as fast, but this allows for bubbles to move through the system much faster. I'm fully, yep, I'm connected to the computer. Gotta make sure I get a signal here. All right, while I'm trying to get a signal, turning the monitor on, I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I think I got it working now. I did get a display output. Looks like we got signal, we're on. Um, obviously we got no internet right now, so it's not gonna mine. 
So I'm gonna hitch this up to the internet and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how this thing starts up hands-free all by itself. 